morning, Miss Amanda. How are you? I'm sore. <laughs> I'm sore this morning. Um, so I am not consistent with working out at all. <clears throat> Excuse me, got scratchy voice. And I've been going to the gym with a trainer who's just part of a gym. And she's been trying to make a workout schedule and teach me to make the equipment and things like that. So this is my second full workout yesterday for upper body um, on what she suggests. And like here and like here, like, ow, it hurts to extend all the way. Did you stretch before and after Diana? I did. I did. <laughs> and I even warmed up. I even did cardio. I never do cardio. Usually I just walk on my own. That's my cardio is I walk everywhere yeah. outside. But um, I even walked for 20 minutes before I started. I was on it. And it's, still nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm immobile, but I, I'm sore, which is a good thing. Because sometimes when I'm doing the workouts, I'm like, is this heavy enough? Is this hard enough? I'm not sure. But the fact that I'm sore today helps me know, yeah, that was heavy enough. At least for mm-hmm. now, that's definitely heavy enough. Gotcha. Other than that, we're good. Just <laughs> a little bit sore. Yeah. How are you? Know. I am tired. It has been, like, the emotional whatever has just continued, but that's a whole other thing. Um... I'm exhausted. I was just telling Diana, like, I forgot what happens on Tuesdays. <laughs> and I get up at five in the morning. And so I took a nap at four in the evening last night. <laughs> so I had a hard time. Noon naps are not a good thing for me because then I don't sleep. And yeah. Just, you know, vicious, vicious cycle. <laughs> yeah. I had a hard time. Uh, see? Uh, I had a hard time falling asleep, and then we've got a little who is teething. And this is some hardcore teething, like running fevers teething. Mm. Um, And our pediatrician is like, oh, well, you don't run a fever. Well, not him specifically, but the office is like, oh, you don't run fevers with teething. That's a virus. And people have just always been wrong about it. And I'm like, he gets a virus every time he starts cutting new teeth. Okay. (laughs) I know. It's moms know. Mm -hmm. All the moms know. (laughs) (laughs) I did have a. I had at least one child who's run a fever when they started teething. Not all the kids do it, but. There's at least one in your brood who's done it. Yeah. I did call uh, the triage after hours one night. And it was like he was super, super, super tiny. And like less than six months at least. But he had just started teething and he was running a fever. And I called and she was like, honey, it's it's teething and I was like but they said it wasn't true it was just an old wives tale and she's like they can say what they want mm-hmm. every mom that has ever had a child will tell yep. you yep yep it's teething but now he's uh, at the age see. where he can tell me what hurts and it's pitiful like I've, I've been waiting for this day like I've been waiting for oh my gosh life will be so much easier when he can just say like mom at this hurts my tummy hurts or my head hurts mm-hmm. or something like that instead of just crying and then not before last he sat in my lap after a bath and was just crying and I said baby just talk to mama what's bothering you and I said does something hurt yeah and I said, what hurts? And he goes, teeth hurt. And of course, he is, like, according mm-hmm. to the dentist, he's teething his canine, bottom canine, and back molars. And that's exactly where he pointed. Mm-hmm. And then I wanted to test it. Like, is he just saying this, you know, because it's what he thinks of or what he knows? And I was like, does your toe hurt? No, mama. I said, does your tummy hurt? No, mama. Does your teeth hurt? Yeah. Teeth hurt. It's like, okay. 
Poor daddy. He's pitiful, but he has discovered a love for what he calls um, assy cream. <laughs> and it's just popsicles. <laughs> love it. Like he didn't even want the ass cream. He wants popsicles. But it's assy pops. They're not assy pops, assy cream. Nice. So yeah, that's been our house this week. And this morning, like I checked on him and he's he's running a fever in his sleep. And I hate that for him. But we'll start the Tylenol and Motrin when he gets up. So Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to wake him up if he's sleeping. Like it's just not worth it. Sleep is more important, I think, a lot of times. Yeah. Unless it's just like that crazy high fever that comes with weird viruses. But I feel like when they're just teething, if they can sleep, that's more important. Yeah. Um the other thing going on in our house right now is as you guys saw in one of our previous episodes, we have a fox that has been attacking our chickens. And I think I already told everybody that it got pet chickens. Which it's just Murphy's law of my house that if it's something's going to die, it's going to be the pet, and that makes me furious. Um, but my mom super generously helped replace chickens that were killed, and now I have like close to twenty puffballs in a box in my mudroom. <laughs> They're cute now, but they grow up to be Satan. They're really cute. And the kids are in love with them. But if I'm being strictly honest, they're kind of useless. Like when you look at them from a any kind of agriculture standing, like if y'all don't know what a silky is, you need to look up a picture of a silky. They are just a ball of fluff. They don't have barbs on their feathers, so all of their feathers are like down feathers. So they're all poof, like they're just little poof balls that walk around. They're bannies, so they're like this big, so they're not worth eating. And because they're bannies, their eggs are also like this big. So you can eat their eggs, there's nothing wrong with them, but they're not eggs I'm going to sell to someone. And they don't, they're not like real high producers, they're good moms. But I don't need them to be good moms right now. <laughs> but Tori loves them. Like, love, 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 loves them. And they are really cute. So if you pray for the unvarnished mamas, please pray for our chickens. That these chickens live a long, long, long natural life. Yes. And that Tori gets to enjoy them for a long time. God love. Um. E saw a chicken the other day. Yeah. We we went driving around uh, uh, by where my mom lives. And there were some goats on one side. And he was just, like, enthralled by the goats. He's like, oh, my gosh. Goats. Goats. Mom. Goats. Goats, mom. Well, then we go up and we turn around and we come back down. And, like, the kid has yet to figure out there's something on the other side of the car uh-huh. like he can't turn his head the other day we were driving and there was a school bus that we were passing and he loves school buses and i was like buddy do you see the school bus over here no <laughs> and i was like it's over here and i'm like knocking on my window and he goes no school bus no school <laughs> bus and i was like okay we're just not going to turn our head but on the way back he got to saw see the chickens Mm-hmm. And he, I stopped to let him watch him for a second because I, I knew the people. And he is like, oh, chicken. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, bud, that's a chicken. Buck, buck. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, mommy, rooster, rooster, mommy, 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 rooster. <laughs> Well, he needs to come back to our house because, I mean, we've got chickens. Well, that might be taking it too far, but you would not be so scared of. Like, you wouldn't be scared of a silky as much because they literally are goofballs walking around. And even if they tried to flog you, I've had a silky rooster try to flog me when I was a kid. It feels like someone hitting you with a throw pillow. Like, it's 
not impressive and it's kind of pathetic i'm like you poor thing you think you're really vicious don't you and you're not actually hurting anyone <laughs> um so yeah Corey will love to let him pet her her box box yes <laughs> well today is our june catch-up episode and I'm not ready for it to be June yet. Well, I said last <clears throat> month, like, I feel like everything happened and nothing happened at the same time. And now this month I was like, oh, I've not really got anything to talk about. Like, oh, no, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to fill stuff in. And then, like, right before we started recording, I looked at my calendar and I was like, oh, I just left a lot of stuff out. I mm-hmm. repressed a lot. <laughs> You had a lot of hard things happen this month, and those have overshadowed all the other things, too. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, just to go ahead and get that over with uh, and off my chest. So if you guys have been listening for a little bit, you know that in March, our community was absolutely just devastated by the accidental death of a little boy in our neighborhood Uh, and my husband and his mom went to church together like she still goes to church with my in-laws and so that was hard and then on the way to his funeral I get a phone call that one of our close family friends had passed And even though, like, he was older, it was one of those things, like, we weren't really expecting it. Um, Mm -hmm. Shane and I had been talking either the day, I think it was the night before, some, I think my in-laws went up to visit them uh, while he was in the hospital. And I was like, he's lived through worse than this. Mm -hmm. Like, this almost seems like an overreaction that everyone's saying goodbye. He's going to be fine. And then he'd passed, like, the very next morning. Um, We go, like, two, three weeks, and now we're in the month of May. Potentially the very, very end of April, but I'm pretty sure the funeral was in May. There was an elder at the church that my husband grew up in. And he was a, a much older guy. But he was so healthy, Diana. I don't even know that me and you have talked about this one. Um, Not sure. He was so healthy that he saw that at the parsonage, there was some dead grass from something they had work done. And he was going to go buy hay and grass seed to spread by himself just to get this job done because he was in good enough shape to do it. And, I mean, he was, like, up in his 80s. -hmm. Gets in a car accident after he picked up the hay and was killed. And so that is the second, like, shock to this community. And it was the same family. It was the little boy's great uncle. Oh, my goodness. So, like, my heart was breaking for them. And then um, a week ago now, a week ago this Sunday, we got a phone call that we had a family member pass. And he was very young. He was only 24 years old. And he had been struggling with some depression and just lost the fight. And so that has been nearly impossible, Um, especially with my history and Mm -hmm. how strongly I feel on the subject. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's it's been hard to cope with and to go to the funeral and see his widow and it's his family, like his mom and his sister. It was. It's been a hard couple of months emotionally. 
and like I'm ready for some rejoicing. <sighs> um, and just to go ahead and get that over with, like let's I've I've taken it really, really dark. Now let's go really, really high. <laughs> <laughs> we have a court date. We go for the termination of parental rights on August the 10th. And it's one of those things as a woman and as a social worker, I feel guilty for being so excited for this moment because they are terminating the rights of these this these parents that are the the biology of my child but at the same time they've not been in the picture at all like I don't at want all. anyone to be confused in any way none yeah. of this family have been in the picture or want to be in the picture the few yeah. that we have you have been able to contact aren't interested and they vocalize that yeah so like, um, this isn't a contested case in any no. way, shape, or form. No. So Bow Mom made the choice to go no contact April of 2021. So it's been over two years now since we have heard from her directly. And then October 2022 she sent word that she wanted us to adopt and she wanted it to be quick. So like, this is just one more step. (laughs) This is just one more step for us. So our attorney has paperwork ready and he is going to be making a motion the day of our TPR date to just go ahead and get the adoption date. Like it's a non-contested case. Um, we have to give 30 days legally, like in the state of Kentucky, they have 30 days to appeal um, the termination. They're not going to. They basically there is this thing called a warning order attorney that has been hired. I think there was I've been a couple of them and they have searched for mom mom's family and then the two potential dads and their families no one responded so they've they've been told there's been phone calls there's been voicemails there's been letters um there's been knocks on the door it's it's not contested um and like i really really respect that i respect the fact that they recognize this is not something they're ready for and instead of dragging this on or fighting that they are just realizing like we're not ready we are too young we she said that she can't sign paperwork but she wants us to adopt him and she's that's on the record so i respect that but yeah, that's that's my highs and lows <laughs> of this month. I can it's fill in the very, rest later. Very high highs and very low lows happening there. Yeah. Um, I cannot wait. It's going to be a party. It's going to be fabulous. I mean, from a family that has adopted, um, the situation was very different, of course. Like, the parental rights were already terminated whenever mom and dad adopted my brothers and sisters. And, um, of course they were in an orphanage situation in a different country. Like it's, it's a different thing all around, but like you said, I have respect for their birth parents for saying, you know, we can't do this. And hopefully this will give them a chance of having someone else that can step in and take this role over for us. Um, I I can't imagine that ever being an easy decision. No. Um, and I don't ever want to treat that 
flippantly. That's an easy thing to do. Um, but I've always been thankful for their birth parents. They were willing to do that in order for my siblings to get to be my siblings. Mm-hmm. Um, so adoption was a different beast. When they were being adopted. It was, it was hairy, man. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. So, um, yeah, we're going to have a party. Oh, yes. That out there. There's going to be all kinds of celebrating when yes. he officially becomes legally your guys. I mean, he's been your guys since yeah. he went to the hospital. But when he gets to be legally your guys, yeah. we are in full party planning mode. <laughs> so we have the shirts picked out. We haven't ordered them yet. Um, but we have the shirts picked out that we're going to wear to court and the parties because we're going to have two because it just makes it easier. Like when, when our families live so far apart, I hate to ask either side to drive over an hour to come celebrate. So, and there's really no place like in the middle. Mm-hmm. So, um, we're just going to do two parties. We have our shirts. We have our theme. I have talked to my cake lady. <laughs> and I've told her like, hey, I don't have a date. Okay. How is like September, October, November looking for you? And she's like, well, they're filling up quick. Mm. And I was like, okay, here's the problem. And she's like, what? I have done how many cakes for you? And I didn't even know that this was an adoption situation. Love it. So, Love it. yeah, she's excited. She's like, I'm going to try my best. Like, I'm not even going to advertise anymore. <laughs> I'm going to try, try my best. She's letting me know what a date is. Yeah, you'll know soon. So, we, I have already booked this. <laughs> I've booked his birthday cakes. Mm-hmm. And in order to book his birthday cakes, I had to set a date for both uh-huh. parties. And in order to get that far, I needed a theme. <laughs> so here we are. It's not even June yet. And I have Ooh. an adoption party planned pretty much at this point. Like, I, I have all the details. And I have an Amazon Ooh. wish list of the stuff that well, I need. But Frank, we've been anticipating this for years. For well over a year and a half now. Like I have words. I should not say these words. <laughs> we've been anticipating. So there's you know, this has been on your heart, this has been on your mind. This is not new thoughts. Yeah. As far as having an adoption party. Yeah. So but I've also got the birthday parties like halfway ready to go. <laughs> Three Osiris Rex. <laughs> yes. That is completely appropriate. That is I have a menu planned that includes dinosaur <laughs> poop. <laughs> Very excited. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But anyway. Um, well. I don't feel like my highs and lows are nearly so high and low, which is probably a good thing. I was going to say, um, it's much easier that way. Yeah, our our world is losing the chickens. But um, our, so I guess the two big things for me this month were I went to the Teach Them Diligently convention in, not Pigeon Forge, what's the one right before? Severeville, right? No, it was in Pigeon Forge. Okay. Pigeon you do Forge. have to pass through Sevierville to get there, but the okay. LeConte Center is in Pigeon Forge. Okay. Well, it was in Pigeon Forge, and um, one of my friends from church, her son is also friends with Ed. Um, she got to come with me, and we survived the hotel that I got last minute and did not feel safe when we got there. I'm really glad I was not by myself. (laughs) Yeah. So planning ahead further next time and getting a better hotel is on the agenda. Um, But I I didn't know quite what to expect because I knew that there were uh, two 
speakers in particular that I really wanted to listen to. And they were not going to be at the Great Homeschool Convention, which is the one I usually go to in Cincinnati. Um, so Jenny Urich from 1000 Hours Outside. And then Kathy Cook, what is her company name? Um, Celebrate Kids is Kathy Cook, Dr. Kathy Cook. Um, I've listened to both of those previously at Great Homeschool Conventions, but they haven't been there the last couple of years, and I knew they weren't going to be there this year. And I really wanted to listen to them again. And I've been to the Great Homeschool Convention, I don't know, four times since I've been homeschooling, at least. And so I wanted to try something different this year. So I was brave, and I went to teach them diligently. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, and it's not um, as big as Great Homeschool Convention. So if anyone is familiar with that convention, um, it's a little bit on the smaller side. The exhibit hall where they have all of the curriculum and supplementation for school, um, colleges, uh, there was a company there that does plays with giant puppets, like life-size horse puppet and life larger than life lion puppet. They were doing a uh, play of the horse and his boy from Narnia. And they were so freaking cool. They had them just walking around the exhibit hall. And I totally got pictures with them because they were so cool. <laughs> um, and took videos of them. Uh, that was really cool. And of course, Kathy Cook and Jenny Urich never disappoint. They're fabulous. I could listen to either one of them all day long. Um, if you haven't, I'm sure there's a way for you to access Kathy Cook's talk on Eight Great Smarts, where she talks about so much of our school system and public school system is centered around one or two types of smarts we consider smart. And she's a, she's a psychologist. She's a doctor in something. Psychologist or child development. I can't remember which. Um, she said, I have so many kids come to me and they say, Miss Kathy, I'm not smart. I'm just not smart. I, I'm not a smart kid. And they struggle with it so hard. And she said, part of why they think they're not smart is because we have narrowed smart into this category that doesn't fit the majority of people and we have forgotten that we have all different kinds of smart like I'm not going to be able to remember them all but there's body smart so you're like physically aware you're really capable with your body you're really coordinated there's nature smart you really get the, the world around you you understand animals and plants <clears throat> excuse me I don't know what's going on with my voice right now <clears throat> There's, um, I think logic smart is like math. Like that's someone who can just put all the pieces together. They're really good at puzzles, engineering kind of thinking. There's word smart. So someone who really understands the written word and language and that just comes really easily to them. There is spiritual smart, someone who just really it's easy for them to believe. They see God everywhere. Um, they can connect with people that way. There's people smart where you just have really good communication skills and you understand people and you want to interact with them. And then what are they do? Music, maybe, is one of them. Music and art smart. Like, you're just really creative. And I knew it. I wasn't going to remember. I should have gotten a list. The missing one. There's, there's another one. Um, and she's like, when we embrace all of these, we can identify them in our kids and call them out. So they never have to feel like they're not smart. And there's just so many different kinds of smarts. And our school system wants to pigeonhole smart into logic smart and word smart. And if you aren't logic smart or word smart, you're not going to feel smart in school because that's all they talk about. That's all they emphasize. That's all they put grades on. That's all they think about. And it completely devalues the six other smarts that you need in the world. And she said, you know, anybody can develop and strengthen other smarts. But most people have inborn two that are particularly strong for them. 
and calling them out and helping a kid recognize those also puts them on a path of success for the rest of their life. Because if you are smart, you're not going to want to go into something where you're really heavy, maybe logic smart. Like you're going to want to consider a career where you're going to be around people and interact with them and work with them and where that's going to be a benefit to you in your job instead of having to deal with this thing that you struggle with all the time. Um, so that was one of the talks that she gave. And then the other one is, um, I think it's called Five to Thrive, maybe. I think maybe that's the name of the book, Five to Thrive. And she talks about your five basic needs. And if you've done any psychology, you know there's like a hierarchy of needs. And you have to have your basic needs met before you can get to your higher needs, which are for a lot of people like happiness and fulfillment and things like that. You've got really basic needs psychologically that have to be met before you can ascend any higher on the ladder. And she talks about them in like how you provide security and foundation for your kids' personalities and for their life. I just thrive, and this is what the book, I don't know, is that backwards because of the, mm, it's, the camera is? It might be backwards, but it's, it's also fuzzy, like it? fuzzy because of the filter. There we go. That's better. Yeah, that's what the book looks like. Um, and I haven't finished this yet, but she did a talk on it, and um, it was just it was really good, and it made so much sense, especially because my lovely husband is a psychology major, and that's his job is counseling people. And we were talking about it afterwards, and he's like, yeah, like, this whole ladder scheme, like, you've got to have these foundations or you're not going to have these things up here. So the foundational one is security. Like, they need to have, who can I trust? Who is my people who I can trust? Who, who do I feel safe with? Is my environment safe? Um, are my parents or siblings or grandparents or whoever I'm living with, are they safe? And do I feel safe there? Do I feel seen? Do I feel cared for? Like, that's your very basic foundation. You can't get to any of these others if you don't have security. And then what's built on that is identity. Like, you cannot look for who am I if I don't, can't trust anybody. So you've got to be able to trust people, and then you get to explore who am I next on top of that. And then on top of identity is belonging. So if you don't know who you are, then you don't know where you belong or who are your people. And if you don't feel safe, you don't have time to figure out who you are or the freedom to figure out who you are. So they all stack on each other. So belonging, she talks about like who wants me and where do I fit and who are my people with my identity, like who I, who I know I am to be. And then once you have belonging, then you can get into purpose because if I belong with this group or I belong with this set of people then I know the direction we're going in if that makes sense like I know what we're trying to accomplish and once I have purpose then I can develop competence what do I do well how do I fit what niche do I fit in and what do I do really great in order to um, be part of this purpose and accomplish my purpose like I've got to have competency in order to accomplish my purpose and she said so often kids come to her and they are struggling really hard with like competence in school and it's making them feel very inadequate or it's making their parents afraid or um, the school is saying, oh, there's a problem. And the competence could be academically, it could be socially, it could be sports, it could be just emotionally struggling. But she said, what we often do is we go way back down. And we have to start at the very beginning. Because competence, that's, that's literally your icing on your cake if you're building a layer cake. Like, it's literally the sprinkles on top. you got to get down here before you can even touch competence. You've got to be secure. You've got to know who you are. You've got to know who your people are. Um, you've got to have a purpose in life. You've got to have a reason for living and for going and for doing things. Lots of words. She's totally worth it if you get to listen to her. Um, and she also makes it really, like, applicable in your home. Like, she's all about, I can't see all these kids. My company can't see all these kids. I can't see all of your kids. 
but I want your kids to not have to see me. I want you to be able to do these things in your home and be really good at them so they don't have to come to someone like me so that you can equip them to just thrive and do amazing without needing my intervention. And she's like, if you need my intervention, great. We're here for you. There's lots of great counselors out there, but there are things that you can do at home to help encourage your kids, get these foundations so they can move on. And she said, nobody knows your kids better than you do. You know what their giftings are, what their passions are. You know what their hangups are and what they struggle with. And she said, you can call those things out in them and help them see those things better than anybody else can. Um, so I love what? <laughs> I love Kathy Cook. She's really cool. Um, and then the other speaker, of course, is Jenny Urich. And if you guys have listened to her podcast at all, you know, she's just lovely. Um, and I listened to, I'd say, three at least of her talks. And one of the ones that was probably my favorite, well, two of the ones that were my favorite, she talked about garden school and how do you turn your garden into like this really cool educational experience and get to bring your kids alongside of them. Um, her and her kids are very like tangible learners. Like they want to have their hands on things and watch it change and watch things grow. So she said the garden is perfect for that. We get to introduce all this vocabulary like germination and stratification and organic matter and what does that mean and you get to see things change and then you get to see things pollinate and move and you get to eat it and you get to you know it's it's all unique and different and there's lots of bloop, 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 lots of learning opportunities so that was a really fun one and then the other one that I enjoyed is like if Kathy Cook were talking about Jenny Urich she's very nature smart and so her other talk was talking about it's called a long way. So the Deuteronomy verse where, you know, you're teaching them and you're telling them along the way, like as you're walking with them, as you walk beside them, as you sit down and as you stand up and as you eat in your house. And he's like, there's all of these spiritual lessons that I see in nature. And I want to bring my kids alongside me to see them with me. And so she was pairing scripture with experiences that she's had in nature and she's like we have so many nature references in scripture and they're beautiful illustrations you get to break them down and look at them and think about God in that aspect like the one that of course I love is she's like you know God is like a mother hen with her chicks and he's you know taking care of them and protecting them and covering them with her with his wings and she said we had a hen that went rogue they were trying to keep them from hatching chicks, but this hen went and she hid and she had chicks all of her own. And we got to watch her do that. We got to watch her gather her chicks up underneath of her and poof out. You couldn't even see them. No predator could get to them because they couldn't even see them to target them. And she showed them where food was and she protected them and she cleaned them and she kept them warm. And she said to think about God caring for us, like that mother hen cares for her chicks. It was delightful for me and it was really fun for my kids. And it just gives you that really tangible example of who God is to us. And so she went through a bunch of examples like that in nature, um, being able to show your kids, like, this is what God is like. This is how he shows up for us. And this is how he shows himself in creation. So those were the two that I went to see. And then I ended up in a lot of. Sonia Schaefer's talks. And Amanda, I think you would have adored her. So Sonia Schaefer runs a company called Simply Charlotte Mason. And she was teaching some of the Charlotte Mason methods for how you would teach a subject. And she just completely, two of the classes, she just walked you through, like, okay, we're going to do an art lesson. How would we do an art lesson like Charlotte Mason would do it? And why would we do it this way? And she's like, you know, so first you observe. And everybody, she, she passed out little uh, postcard sized pieces of an actual art, like actual art, and went through the whole process. And it was so cool 
Like it just fired me up. I'm just like, I'm a little bit Charlotte Mason-y anyway, because she incorporates a lot of nature studies. She incorporates a lot of living books. And um, there's a lot of observation and narrating back to Charlotte Mason. And some things though, I struggled with like, what does that actually look like? How would that actually work in practice? Like I get the theory, I understand why you would want to do that, but how does that work in practice? And she just did it and it was wonderful. And I remember it now because of the way that she did it. Like it was just, it was really good. So I went to several of her talks. And um, one of the things that was notable to me with this convention is there was a really heavy emphasis on family and on building connections in your family and building a family culture and that we need to like protect and encourage and enrich the family unit like that is the priority and i see that at great homeschool conventions but there's a lot heavier emphasis i think in a lot of it depends on who you go listen to of course yeah but I feel like there's a heavier emphasis on academics and practicalities at the great homeschool conventions. It's not to say that these weren't practical. They were very practical, especially like the Charlotte Mason walking you through things. But every single one was directing you back to you're the family, you're qualified to do this. You, that this is valuable for the family and for building your kids and building your future and connecting each other and making your kids feel safe and all of those things. Um, there was a really heavy emphasis on that for this convention. It was also very obviously Christian. Um, I feel like great homeschool convention, there's a lot of Christian speakers that they try to be more neutral in order mm -hmm. to maybe appeal to a, a wider audience. Whereas this was we are not embarrassed. We are not ashamed. We are Christian home educators. And that's what we're going to talk about. And if you're not comfortable with it, this isn't the place for you. Like, this probably isn't the convention for you. And there's other conventions you could go to. Um, so it was good. It was a different, it was a different convention than what I'm used to, but it was still really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at the funeral this week, um we were sitting at a table and there is a couple of family members that I had been wanting to speak to my husband it's my husband's family because I heard that not that long ago she homeschooled her kids now since I've known them they've all been in school that's I didn't know that they homeschooled until recently and just so happened that we sat with them during the family dinner that was after the service. And finally, I was like, Mia, I need to talk to you. And Shane was like, oh, yeah, like she does actually. Um, we are considering homeschooling E. And she just wanted to kind of pick your brain. And she was like, I love homeschool. I asked, okay. What method did you use? And she said, go ahead right now and stop thinking about that. Yeah, straight up. Don't worry about it. I, I obsessed about that for way too long. I, she, I, like, I worried about it too long. Well, she said, I have four kids. And with four kids, I used four different methods. Three of them at the same exact time. She said, stop thinking about method. Stop thinking about the base. Like, what what you're going to need and plans and all that she's like what you need are good organizational skills to plan your school days you need to understand the core concepts of what you have to legally teach them at this age and then and consistency like that's the yeah. freaking hardest one is consistency she's like that's really that's it that's all you need and she said because trust me you are going to feel the weight of you are responsible entirely for your children's education. Yep. And she said, in who, whichever one of you is in the home is going to feel it the most. 
And she said, you know, Shane works. He's going to feel it some. It's going to be heavy for you. And the heaviness of that can sometimes make you feel like you're stuck or you need to just stand still or freeze. She said, but at the same time, that heaviness is going to light a fire under you and you're going to do great. And I got to talk to her for a long time and it was great. And each of her children made the decision independently to go back to traditional school. Three of her children have graduated high school. Uh, One actually just graduated Saturday. All three have graduated like high classes with honors. Mm -hmm. And she said, I did that because I taught, they can do that because I taught them how to learn. Yes. I taught them, each of you are different. Each of you are going to learn differently. This is what you need to know to know how to learn these things. And so she was just amazing. But then like one of the last things she said to me was, the best thing you need to do is go to the homeschool conference in Cincinnati every year. And I was like, it's so encouraging. (laughs) I was like, well, my friend Diana, like she goes every year and she's been telling me that I need to go and I'll probably will go like next year, like as we're getting ready. And she goes, they have preschool stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, but that's why I'm going to go next year. Like when he's three, about to be four. And she goes, you could have gone this year. Yes, I like this woman. That was what I was saying. Go with me. Go with me. I cannot speak highly enough about it, guys. If you are considering homeschooling, if you are homeschooling, like, go. Just pick one and go. If you can take some girlfriends, go. If you can take your husband, go. If you can't, make it a weekend for yourself. I mean, the there's something so encouraging about seeing so many people on the same path as you, even though they're maybe doing it, you know, individually in their own families and not feeling alone. Because if you don't have a really good support of a community, it's very easy to feel alone when you're doing this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even when you have a good community support, it can be easy to feel alone when you're doing this. And just to see so many people coming together, at these conventions, that alone is encouraging. And then you guys, some of these speakers are stellar. Like they are top notch. They have brilliant ideas. There's some of them that I go to every year just for encouragement. Like they just speak into me life. And I come away so jazzed. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, we can do this. I need this. We we can we can see this through. Um so I don't, you know, whatever convention you pick, do it. Like it is worth it. Um, I also think about, you know, my husband with his job, he has continuing education credits. Shane with his job, he has continuing education things that he needs to do. Lots of teachers that I know, they have teachers conventions and conferences and um, you know, improvement. You're a teacher. You're just in your home. If you're mm-hmm. having trouble justifying this, all teachers do this. You need development too. You need encouragement too. And also, do not buy new curriculum there. You better pinky promise me that you do not buy <laughs> curriculum on the spot. You go home and you think about it first because that's a really big temptation is to go in there and just completely change all of your curriculum every single time. Don't do that. Um, if you're going to go to the exhibit hall, either just go to look or have something very specific that you want to put your hands on because it can get really overwhelming. Every single curriculum hall I've ever been in, they're bonkers, guys. Like, I can't even... The one at the Great Homeschool Convention is... One, two, three, four. It is completely packed the size of five, I think, full court basketball courts. Completely packed. Of booths and people and stuff. It's very overwhelming if you're not ready for it. And even if you're ready for it, it's overwhelming. So it's cool though. And to me, now that I feel comfortable with what we're doing for our school, it's encouraging because, like, there's literally a curriculum for 
any learning style. Like it's out there. You have so many options. When my mom started homeschooling us, there were three curriculums. The end. <laughs> and I would never choose any of them. <laughs> I would never use them again. Um, there's plenty of people who have great success with them, but I would never choose them. Um, because there's so many options. There's so many things you can do. So that was a whole lot of words. That was at the beginning of May, and I loved it. I have lots of words about conventions all the time. And then um, we've been preparing for Chris to change jobs, and that's very exciting. We had an open house for him at his new job, um, and he's been finishing up at his current job, and he actually had his last day at his current job on Friday. And he is taking a few days off here at the beginning of the week before he starts at his new job at the Freedom Center on Thursday. And it's, it's wild. I'm excited, but it's also, it's a big change. Um, it's going to be a good change, but it's a big change. And uh, he won't see patients until Monday. So like June 5th. Um, so here we go. We're jumping into this adventure. Yes. And then, um, we just had our 4 H stuff. We've broken down on garden. I feel like I'm super behind on my garden. Um, we've just now gotten it really broken up and tilled. I wanted to do, um, raised beds this year, but we are having a hard time finding a dump truck to deliver the soil and compost that we need to do the raised beds. So I think we're going to do some things in ground and just build up the raised beds as we go this summer once we finally get some composting soil in um, and look at it more as a long-term project than what I was trying to do, which was get it all done at once. Um, and then we also got to spend five days in Panama City Beach, Florida. Yeah, about that, Diana. Yeah. At one point, I told Shane that you needed to get your stuff together <laughs> because I was checking your Facebook page. Like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not updated yet. I'm. I was. I was, not, I was I checking it like every hour or so <laughs> because I was loving like the little day or half day updates. Yeah. And then we get to day three, and I was like, oh, boy, "What did they do that evening? What did they do on day four? And you stopped posting. I did. I did. I got to catch up. <laughs> I got really into it and I was having fun. And then I realized there was some videos that I took that I wanted to share, but they're really long and I needed to cut them down and that got overwhelming and I kept getting distracted. So I've got to keep going. So yeah, we, I got up today, I think it is day three. And then, um, is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then day four, we got to go on a dolphin tour slash going to Shell Island. It was fabulous for us. Y'all, we had the best trip. I have been to Florida a lot of times in my life. I think we talked about this on the um, like vacations episode last, last year. Ago. Um, because my grandparents had a house in Florida. And that was all of our vacations growing up. So we always went to their house in the winter. <laughs> so, um, which in Florida is lovely in winter. But I, I've been there a lot. And Ebenezer was born. Eb was born in Florida. Um, and I went to school there. And we lived there for three years. So I've been to Florida a lot. This is probably the best trip I've ever had in Florida. We had beautiful weather the whole time. Um, we loved where we were staying. Our little Airbnb was really close to the beach. Um, it was on the beach side of the really busy street that we had to cross last time we went. Um, the kids got to see a shark that someone caught from the beach and they got to hold it, which I was really happy that happened our last night because I'm not sure I could have swum in the ocean after yeah. that. It wasn't big. It was like, I don't know, like the size of my arm, like from here to here. But the problem was, 
It was the fourteenth one he caught that evening. I'm about to go to the beach, Diana. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't have hurt you. It didn't have real teeth. But it still was freaking me out. Like I don't like chickens. Shook. And you think I just want to go swim with sharks? <laughs> You're in a different beach. Maybe they won't be there. That's what I'm going to tell myself. <laughs> I shouldn't have told you that because I'm trying to get you to go to Florida. I want you to come with me. It was beautiful. Um, so there's a little uh, spur. I don't know what they call it. A barrier island, I think is what it's called outside the bay. They're at um, Panama City Beach, it's called Shell Island, and it's part of St. Andrews, I don't remember if it's a state park or a national park. And we had heard about it last time we were there, but that was part of why we took the boat tour, was to get to go see it and see how, you know, if we wanted to spend time there. And there was this ferry that took you there and then went, like, you could stay as long as you wanted. There was a ferry that went back and forth every half hour. But if we paid about 7 to $10 more for a ticket, we wouldn't get to stay as long as we wanted on the island, but we'd get around an hour, but we'd also get a dolphin tour. And that's the option that we chose. And I'm really glad we did. It was a really good experience. Um, Captain Anderson's, if anybody wants to go try it, they were lovely. Um, and we got to see a pod of over 30 wild dolphins. Wow. And there were at least two babies. And everyone went supersonic. It was fantastic. All of the moms and all of the kids were like, oh my gosh, it's so <laughs> Like, it was fantastic. And then um, they put out like crab traps and they pull them in so the kids can see what they caught in their crab traps. And uh, we actually got to go to the island, of course. And it was, it was so cool. Um, we were, hoping to find big shells and we did like that's kind of part of the draw of the island is there's so few people and it's a little further out in the ocean so there's more shells and more intact shells so um for the first time in my life and I've been like I said I've been there a lot I found a intact sand dollar and it was like about this big and we saw lots of living shells where they still had the snails and little creatures in them there were oodles of um, hermit crabs inside shells. Like you pick up a shell and you're like, oh boy, I get to take this home. Nope, there's a hermit crab. I have to put it back. You can't take home anything that's alive. I've got to put the hermit crab back. <laughs> um, the kids were like so excited. Look at mom, look at this one. I'm like, uh, there's claws in there. You got to put it back. I'm like, no, can't I shake it out? I'm like, no, you can't shake it out. That's its home. <laughs> put it back. Um, yeah, had a fantastic trip. We, we did Shell Island, we did Gulf World, which is a little bitty, it seems like really low budget sea world. <laughs> um, the kids were like, can we, they said we can swim with dolphins. Can we swim with dolphins? I was like, that is not in your mama's budget. We get to watch the dolphins. That's not in mama's budget to swim with the dolphins. Um, oh, cool. They have a really neat facility there, Amanda, where like, They've got all this space for them in the back, and they do wear all different options for the dolphins. There's just doing training where you don't even get in the pool if you're a little bit worried about it. There's taking pictures with them. There's actually getting in the water and swimming around with them. There's one where you get to do the foot push, where they put their um, beak on your foot and push you up out of the water. Um, they have a lot of options for you to interact with the dolphins there. And uh, so okay, I'll go with you to Panama City Beach, Florida, anytime you want. Y'all just don't understand. Shane wants, we were looking for something fun to do on a vacation. And like, we're at the ocean. Let's just see. And he wanted to see if they, if there was anywhere that offered like swimming with dolphins. And when I found out that he was even like, looking at it even like there's nothing there there's nothing anywhere close to there that offers that Mm -hmm. i cried i cried (laughs) like a baby and then we are planning a cruise in april and we we were discussing it and i was looking at like where is the cruise going and all that what are some of the uh excursions you can do they have swimming with dolphins 
and I cried again. (laughs) (laughs) I went to Vegas. We went and saw some dolphins. I cried like a baby and (laughs) sat beside of the dolphins and just stared at them. (laughs) Um. We got to go in early for the dolphin show. And it was funny because like the dolphins, they know what's getting ready to happen and they like doing the training. It was interesting to them. And so they kept going by the, the glass and the kids were like right here, like you're not supposed to touch the glass, but they're as close as they can get. And the dolphin would shake its head at them as it went past and they're like freaking out. So they had a really good time. Um, we are I'm not going to talk about it too much because we're going to talk about a beach trip. And I'll probably use some examples from that. But um, some pro tips for y'all is like, go enjoy the beach with your kids. Like, wear the swimsuit, get in the water, be in the pictures. It, it's worth it. Like, forget all of the stupid skinny people on the beach that are out there in their bikinis. Put on your sun shirt. You're not going to be a crisp like me. Like. Well, be be with your kids, guys. It's worth it. Like, I, I didn't let that stop me this time, but those thoughts were definitely there. You know, like, I think all of us have those thoughts of looking around at the people around you and feeling judged, but no one's paying attention to you guys. Oh, honey. They're not. They're there for the beach. By the time this episode comes out, it's already going to be available on our TikTok Instagram and Facebook. I had considered doing like my full, like the dance and everything. No, I'm just like, it's not that I'm not comfortable doing it. It's that that's a lot of freaking work. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm uh, duetting Hot Mom Summer by Emily Vandy. I love her. Me too. Her I and Lindsay Gurick are. 10 out of 10. Freaking yeah, love she, that She's one. the one with like the curly hair, right? And she does yeah. the, like, the dance. Oh my gosh. So hot mom summer. Like if you need the reminder, this is a hot mom summer. Hot mom summer, y'all. Well, and just like think about our bodies way too freaking much. Mm-hmm. Our body is here to conduct our souls through this life. Mm-hmm. And to take care of us and to let us experience them. Not to be a showpiece for strangers. Yeah. I'm very much. Hug your kids and do fun things. And I've spent too much of my life worried about what strangers think about my body in a swimsuit. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah. I very much have come to realize I need to think about my body as much as I think about your body. And trust me, that's not that often. Right? And so if I'm comfortable and I'm happy and I just heard a cry from another room. (laughs) Um, But if I'm comfortable and I'm happy, I'm wearing it. Mm -hmm. And my mom the other day, I was shopping and I was wearing a pair of bicycle shorts and I was shopping for another pair and she's like, mm, are we sure? Like, this is going to help because, like, every woman in my family has the same legs and nobody likes them. And she's like, well, this will help hide your legs better if you get, like, the capris. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, it does. But. If you wanted to wear a pair of shorts, I'm not even going to look at you. I'm not going to think twice about it because you're comfortable Mm -hmm. and you're cool. And like, that's what you want to wear. I'm not going to look at your legs. Like, I don't care what people think about me. And then I wore a dress that came above the knee like two days later. (laughs) And she saw me and she was like, I would have never ever guessed that you would have been comfortable enough to wear that and I was like well I just came back from swim class and those people saw me in a whole lot less than this <laughs> and I figure at that point 
They can see me in a dress. It's fine. They can see me in shorts. It'll be okay. I'm going to make it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, I, I've spent so much of my life being real candid here, guys. I've spent so much of my life hating my body. And I think that's relatable for a lot of women. Like, that I've not liked the way I've looked even before I have kids. And I was my smallest I ever was. I didn't feel like, oh, I've got a great body. I, I compared myself to people around me who I thought were prettier or had were more in shape or um, just I thought they had nicer bodies. And my body's done awesome things, y'all. Like, even before I had kids, I'm a farmer's daughter. My body's thrown hay bales and wrestled calves and fed baby calves and run and run tractors and learned how to drive and learned how to be a friend. My body gives hugs. My body comforts babies. My body carried babies, people. Like, yes. Delivered mm-hmm. babies. I nursed babies. So, yeah, that's going to make my body look different than it did before I had babies. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make my body less. Yeah. That doesn't make it unvaluable. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't diminish the value of my body. Exactly. But it also doesn't mean that it's something to worship. By thinking so much about my body, it turned it into something that I was worshiping. Like Mm -hmm. it was something that was taking my attention away from the purpose that my body was made for. The purpose my body was made for was to love people and to live my walk. And my body should not be taking any more attention than that. Yeah. Like my body needs to be strong. So I think exercise and good food and things like that are important in order for my body to be strong. But that is for my purpose of taking care of my kids and loving people and taking care of the things that have been entrusted to me, not so that I look good for strangers. Mm -hmm. Like, that is what I'm learning (laughs) in my 30s. Finally, after all this time, (laughs) if you can learn it before me, good for you. Please do that. But, like, I don't want to worship my body anymore that way. Mm -hmm. I want to use my body for what God gave it to me for. For glorifying him and taking care of the things that he's given me and loving the people that he's given me to love. And I need to take care of it in order to do that, which is why I'm really uncomfortable in a gym because I want to have strong bones when I'm 60. And in order to have strong bones when you're 60, you need to lift heavy things. Um, but I let what other people might think of me me from experiencing some wonderful things mm-hmm. for far too long yeah i don't want to do that anymore yeah soapbox <laughs> that's what i'm here for right all my soap <laughs> all of amanda's soapboxes this is what we do <laughs> for goodness um i guess to start to kind of wrap i'll go through a little bit about what what i've done this month um other than the highs and the lows so I, if you know me, you know that I'm cruel to myself for the sake of fun. <laughs> is it really fun? <laughs> it is. And like, I never, ever, ever regret it. But I also know so many people could not live the life I live. <laughs> you are going all the time. Yeah. Well... My brother and his wife went to a concert on the 11th. So that's a Thursday. And my mom was watching my niece. So, okay, well, look how this works out. This is great. Um, Let's go do something fun with the babies. Okay, what do we want to go do? I threw out some options. She didn't like any of them. So then finally I said, you've been wanting to go to the ark I had been waiting to go to the ark because my friend that passed uh tech he was the building inspector on the ark he was the county building inspector as it was being built and so I haven't been there yet I want to go well I'd been waiting on him and then he passed so I wasn't able to go with him 
I cried my eyes out going in the door. But that's a whole other thing. So we go up on the 11th and we take the kids on the 12th. Like the 11th was just us traveling. The 12th, we go to the Ark. We were going to do Ark and Creation. I can't. It's too much. No. You can't do both in one day. Don't Please, people, don't plan to do Ark and the Creation Museum in one day. You no. cannot. It's it's not. You're, you're selling yourself short. You're not going to get the most out of both of them. Do two different days. Yeah. Um, I, we were at the Ark for four hours. And, and you will be at the Creation Museum just as long, if not longer. Yeah. We saw all the things. And it was really fun. And we loved it. Um, it was really, really fun. They have a, a petting zoo. Mm -hmm. And so the, you get to go do the petting zoo. It was goats. And our kids are kind of used to goats. So they didn't do that. But there was also like a little tiny mini zoo. And I don't even think I realized he knew what it was. But I pull up and E says, hi there, zebra. <laughs> so it's like, okay. And then he just jabbers. Yes, he was jabbering to the zebra. And then I was like, okay, are you ready to go find the cousin? And he's like, okay, bye, zebra. Bye, zebra. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, this is the cutest thing. Um, and if you know my boy, Habibi, he loves cars. All of the cars. If it has wheels, it's for him. And we're shuttling up from the parking lot to the Ark. And he's going, bus, mama, bus, E on a bus, mama. <laughs> and like all the other adults around him thought it was just so cute and they were like do you see the really big boat look at that big boat and he goes yeah bus. <laughs> that's nice but I'm on a bus right now this is the really cool thing right now it was so cute loved it there um we went to their buffet restaurant 10 out of 10 so good uh, but yeah, that was really fun. And then, so we go up the 11th, the 12th, we go to the museum or the ark. The 13th, we took our time and came back home. And then the 14th, yes, I think 14th or 15th, this whatever Sunday was at that point, was Mother's Day. Oh, man, I forgot about Mother's Day. <laughs> What's this month? Yeah. Um, and so, like, we had celebrated two days before we left for the Ark. Because I, I have discovered in the last two years, while I appreciate it, I don't need that day. Mm -hmm. I would rather you celebrate me on a completely different day. Uh -huh. We'll celebrate everybody else. And instead of trying to fit everyone in. On one day. Yeah. You know what? I deserve my own day. <laughs> <laughs> I like that plan. You give me my day. And then we'll celebrate the grandmothers and the mothers and the great grandmothers and all of them. Did I show on... you what I picked out for myself for Mother's Day? Oh, I've seen it on Instagram. I like it super happy with it it's got all the pockets not cheaper than a go rock back <laughs> i got a lounge chair for outside and so it's I... not just like the lounge it has a cover <gasps> i love perfect. it perfect it's great and it's great for like me to nap but it's even better for him to nap while we're outside playing he can just like come over and pass out on the on the edge Fantastic. Um, except for the other day he was playing and he keeps backing up. And I was like, Patty, you better stop. You this isn't gonna end well. And he finally like pushes himself off the edge and he falls. And it, he didn't get hurt. He bumped the, his head on like the corner of the chair as he fell. 
Um, <laughs> but afterwards, he's in my lap and he's about to take a nap and he's, you know, how kids will just talk. And I mean, I talk when I'm falling asleep. And he goes, Mama, he wrecked. <laughs> Yeah, you did. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that, that that's what happened. I have a video of it. It's adorable. I'll need to send it to you. Um, but that's Sunday. Also, that Saturday, I put it on Instagram. We found out I needed new tires because I had a nail in one of mine. But it was honestly time anyway. Like, everybody keeps saying, you only had your tires a year, not even a full year. And I was like, yeah, but in that year, I've done, like, 70,000 miles. Yeah, you've put, like, three years' worth of traffic on those tires. So, <laughs> and my dad was like, my dad's a mechanic, and he's like, there's no way you need a new tires. I was like, oh, no, there. here's a picture. And he said, then never get those tires again. And I was like, Dad, do you realize how many miles I put on it? I'd tell him, and he's like, that can't be right. And Shane's like, no, it is. Like, this is what the speedometer said when we got it. Or not the speedometer. The odometer said when we got it. And this is what it says now. And I was like, think about well, it, Dad. Like, I, I mean, drive to Lexington. Drive into your parents' house alone. That's a long drive. And you yeah. do that every week. Pretty much. And then Most you do weekends, at least. Class almost every week. Like, those two alone are a lot of driving. No. And then we've done, uh, since we've got the car, we got the van June 6th last year. We get it on a Monday. We leave for South Carolina on Friday. Huh. Come home from South Carolina. Went to Wilmington, North Carolina. Like a month later. And then a couple of weeks, not even a full week, I don't think. After that, we went to Arkansas. And then we come back from Arkansas on one day. The very next day, we went to Louisville. Mm -hmm. So this is just my life. Um, so had to get new tires, but my father-in-law was a saint and helped with that. And he made it entirely possible. There's no way I could have handled it. And then Monday evening, we leave to go to Pigeon Forge. Well, to go to Sevierville. And we spent the night at the Wilderness Lodge, which I highly suggest over Great Wolf. Like, you know, I started I'm to glad say, you went there because I passed there mm -hmm. on my way in. And it's the one with all the big slides outside of the, the, the hotel or lodge or whatever it is. It looked yeah. really cool. It also looked like they were still working on it, maybe. Like, are they still building or are they, they were just opening? Okay. So they were getting the outside ready to open. Okay. Um, but there's also a massive water park directly beside of it called Soaky Mountain. Yeah. So you've got indoor, partial outdoor, and Soaky Mountain on the same property. Maybe that's what I was seeing. Okay. Probably. Um, because but... I was kind of like, the, the convention that we went to is one where it looked like there was enough stuff there to do to like, take the kids. Mm -hmm. And I was like, where would we stay if we did that? And I was like, it'd be really cool to stay somewhere like that for the days that they didn't come in with me to the convention. But yeah, like I started to say no shade to Great Wolf Lodge. No, full shade. Full, <laughs> full shade. Horrible experience there. I know it's not everyone's experience. Hey. Um, but I saw that they're still doing the same types of wristbands from your pictures. No. No. Same type of wristbands and the like the magic whatever it is stuff that they do yeah. is still the same. And like I don't mind that it's still the yeah. same. I know people enjoy it, but there's some of them that need fixed and updated. Yeah. And they have not fixed or updated them. Like if you're gonna pay that much to play a game, you want it to work. Yeah. Um, I don't anyway. think this one had any of like the magic top things. Um but instead of like those paperish bands, these are like cloth. Nice. <laughs> and it's the same concept. Like that's your ring key. That's your key to get in and out of the pool. That's your key to get around the building. Um, baby, this is a book. Mama can't read it to you right this second. 
but I would love to read this book to you soon, okay? Oh, good morning, sunshine. Okay. Um, but yeah, loved that. And then we went to the zoo for the very first time the very next day. Um, I was exhausted. And I text my family and was like, hey, I hit that 50 pound mark. Um, also, I'm going to need to lose another 50 before I go to another zoo. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I'm so proud of you, though. You're going to hit what you need to hit. You're doing awesome. Thank you. Knoxville Zoo is, like, very hilly. And there was a lot of uphills pushing a stroller with 20 pounds inside. And so that and was And all rough. the other things that you put in the stroller. Yeah. So. I kind of miss my strollers. <laughs> Especially when we go to a zoo. I'm like, I wish I had my stroller to put all my stuff in, even if it wasn't the kids. They're great. Um, but that's pretty much been like our month. I feel like there was something else though that I was like, oh, I really want to just touch on this one time real real quick. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Do you have anything else? No, that was really it. No, I don't have anything big. I mean, we just we did our normal stuff. We did 4-H meetings, and I got to watch Ember do agility with BB, and that was really fun. I need to video it next time. She loves it. Diana, this is yes. a thing, and I'm having an existential crisis over this thing. <laughs> okay. Hi, buddy. I love you. What makes water water, and when is water no longer water? Water is... H2O, two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. It's okay. water. When is it no longer water? Like, when is it no longer liquid or when is it no longer okay. molecularly water? I'm confused. <laughs> so here's the thing. There's this thing called water talk. And apparently it's, like, very controversial. And I was like, okay, I've got to go check this out. Like, what is happening? I need the tea here. I need the tea on the water. But water talk is women on their weight loss journeys, making different flavored waters. Flavored waters. Do you remember when you could walk in a gas station and buy flavored water, by the way? Yeah. Like, I don't remember seeing those. I don't, I can't think of any place that I've seen them lately. What is that? I haven't looked for them, but I also don't like most flavored waters. Well, you know, you've heard me talk about me. I've talked about Mia's on here. I get a cup of water. I have this Stanley cup. Okay. In this Stanley cup, I have ice. And I filled it up with water and a couple of squirts of Mio. What is this? Flavored what am I water. drinking? Flavored water. Okay. If I used a powder instead of a liquid, what is it? Still probably, I don't know, electrolyte flavored water depends on what you used. So, but still, like, I have a packet of, like, flavoring. I put it in the water. I drink all of it. It's still water. It's flavored water. I put a protein shake in it. And along with the flavoring. It's no longer water. It's a protein shake because it's thick. I can understand that. It's thick. Well, it's thick and it also has, it's carrying a lot more stuff in it. Like it's mm -hmm. carrying protein, it's carrying whatever you use to make the protein shake. I get, um, <laughs> I get, uh, I lost my train of thought. Can't imagine. All right. So, okay. You were on protein shake. I get my water. Oh, syrup. Starting to add syrup to flavor their water. That's a little girl on a beach. What's that? That's a boat. That's a lot of things mom's going to have to edit. <laughs> what is that? Good. Good job. Um, but I now have syrup. Flavored syrups in my water. Syrup is sugar water, right? Like, that's how you make yeah. simple syrup? Water yeah, and sugar? I would start saying that, that it counts less as water at that point, though, when you start adding a bunch of sugar and stuff into it. Well, what if it's, like, 
the diet stuff and there's not actual sugar in it. Still different. For me, I, like, I would still consider this flavored water because okay. the packets probably have a little bit of that in it. Yeah. Okay, but then you get a pitcher of water and you get the flavoring packet and a little bit of like Linda. Now it's Kool Aid. Where did it change from flavored water to juice or Kool Aid? Uh-huh. This is bothering me. <laughs> well, then what if you're going to go that route, what about tea? Yeah. Yeah, like, That's I, was, water. I was on the phone with my mom yesterday, like, while I'm, I'm having this issue in my head, and I'm drinking, it's an elephant, I'm drinking a um, refresher from Starbucks, and I was like, what is this? What is this? Because it's water, and a little bit of syrup, and some cut up fruit. At what point does the water no longer count? You did this go from me ordering a water to juice or a refresher. Oh, babies. Like, where? Where did this happen? And it really freaking bothers me. <laughs> I guess I've not thought about it that way because I put all of those things in different categories in my head. For me, water is just water. Like, that's just water. Flavored water is its own category. And that's something my dad loves is flavored water because he can't handle just straight water. So he drinks a lot of flavored water. But to me, it's different than just drinking pure water. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like its own little thing. And then I've got tea and then I've got Kool-Aid. Like they're all their own little bubbles. And you've got soda and you've got coffee and I don't know. See, I've like never... I drink some regular water. Anything. But I mostly drink flavored water because the flavor water is what makes me uh, keep drinking and staying hydrated. But I feel hydrated. Uh -huh. Like, not to get too gross, but my pee is clear. <laughs> when I drink my flavored water, like, I still feel hydrated. Where does the hydration yeah. no longer count? Like, it's a problem. Well, I mean, like, you can be hydrated from, like, teas, too. Like, tea is still hydrating. Like, there's all kinds of tea. There's all kinds of flavored waters. I feel like the things that, well, I don't feel like soda is hydrating. Yeah. Like, soda is dehydrating for me. I have mm -hmm. to drink other stuff to get up for the soda. I don't feel like coffee is hydrating for me. Mm -hmm. like that's not something that actually hydrates me. Yeah. It serves a different um, purpose. Yes. It's a different kind of beverage. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like. If I were to have a protein shake or a smoothie, those aren't hydrating to me. But, like, lemonade can be hydrating to me. Like, I don't know, you know? I mean, that's yeah. the goal is to be hydrated. It's, like I said, I'm having an existential crisis over and over here. <laughs> and I just wanted to leave that, like, in the podcast with that little, if I have to worry about this, so do you. <laughs> If this takes up brain space for me, it's going to take up brain Don't space touch. for you. Yes. <laughs> Don't touch. <laughs> also, if you want to go watch all the people fight ah. on TikTok over water talk. Entertaining. Yeah. Jamie French did a really good YouTube video about it where she asked the same question. Like, that's how I learned about it. She was like, what is water talk? Why does it matter? Uh -huh. If I'm drinking, I'm drinking. Uh huh. And then she's like, "Okay, no. When you put seven pumps of syrup in, it's not water to anymore. a forty ounce Stanley cup. That's no longer hydrating. That's not water." And then she's like, "Let me show you how you can do flavored water, and it still be water." And she puts like two pumps in, and she's like, "I don't even taste anything." <laughs> and she puts four pumps in, and she's like, "I'm just now getting a hint." And she puts five in and she's like, this is ridiculous. And honestly, I could use more, but I refuse on principle. <laughs> she's like, the water molecules are all still there, people. <laughs> she's like, it's not taking away the molecules. But yeah. She's not wrong. Yeah. Well, I've heard people talk about, like, we actually don't get super hydrated by just water. Mm-hmm. 
because most people's bodies also need some kind of electrolyte to let them use the water properly. Mm -hmm. And did you know that drinking milk is just as much considered an electrolyte as Gary? Wow. For like a recovery drink after a workout, you're better off drinking milk because it hydrates you just as much as Gatorade and it gives you fat and protein to help your body recover after a workout. Makes sense. So, oh, oh, oh. Skip, skip the Gatorade, skip the water, drink milk. There's a yeah. no bug for dairy farmers everywhere. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to pull my microphone over here. Uh huh. <laughs> um, we should probably wrap this up. Sorry for the chaos at the end. That's we were good. hoping he would sleep a little bit later, and here we are. <laughs> well, I stole time going and getting my book. Oh, you're good. But okay. Um this is how I live my days. This this right here. Um there is always a hand in my hair like that. Always. All the time. If he is within reaching distance of me, this is where we are. While he's playing, while he's sleeping. This is my life. But thank you guys so much for listening through the chaos. Appreciate it. (laughs) Uh, Diana, thanks for having a conversation with me. Yeah. Someday I want you to come to Florida. It's going to happen. What was that? I said someday I will get you to come with me to Florida. It's going to happen. Well, I'm technically going to Florida in April. You're going Uh through Florida. Well, I'm stopping in... Port Canaveral. So I guess it's Orlando. <laughs> no. Yeah. Hello, Mom. Orlando's in the middle of the state. Is that? Is that? Yeah. But Port Canaveral's like. Mama. I'm pretty sure Mama. it's like. Is that? As much ocean as you can get inland. Mama. Mama. Okay. I think. I is that? I've never been there. What is that? Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, friends. <laughs> well. Please continue to look for the beauty in your unvarnished life this week, and we will talk to you soon. Love you, Mandel. Love you. Bye. Bye.